Well, the bag is Jackson now with no finding bringing you uh, today's small business financing news. We're, we've got some exciting stories for you, including new developments helping small businesses open in airports, a federal rate cut that's made them feel optimistic about the future, and important support for communities affected by the hurricanes. So, stay tuned because there's a lot to go over and talk about today. So, first up, have you ever dreamed about starting a business in a busy airport? Well, the Hartsfield Jackson Airport, the Atlanta Airport, International Airport has just announced a new program for small businesses. And many of you know, the Atlanta Air Airport is the busiest in the country. I used to travel there all the time for my first job out of college. I was uh, traveling all over the South. So usually flying Delta and going through Atlanta and there's just, there's huge concourses there and there's so many, you know, little restaurants and shops. So for, uh, for the Atlanta Airport, I think this makes a lot of sense to be able to bring in small business owners from the community, from Atlanta to you know, a program for them to get, get set up with the airport and obviously open up business there and offer more goods and services to those visitors of the Atlanta airport. So the ATL Concessions Small Business Academy will start in February of 2025 here in just a few months. and will help these new business owners learn how to succeed in that airport environment. Participants will take part in workshops and discussions that cover important topics like how to submit proposals and manage their businesses at the airport. The graduation ceremony will take place during National Small Business Week in May of 2025. So that's where they'll actually start implementing. They'll decide, you know, from the request for proposals, they'll decide which small business owners or prospective small business owners that they want to add into that airport in May. So a cool story coming from the Atlanta airport there. Um, next, let's talk about some good news from the Federal Reserve. Since they cut interest rates in September for the first time in, in a few years, Small business owners feel a lot more positive about their future outlooks. Many businesses say they're planning to borrow money and invest in their growth. Banks are also expecting more loan requests in the next six months. Could this mean that more businesses will be able to expand? I think so. Uh, we read a report too last month that the, uh, the small business owners' optimism, how they feel about their business, actually, uh, that actually leads the loan demand for the banks. The banks are going to businesses and saying, hey, you know, let's, let's get you a loan. Let's get you. Let's, let's have you ready to expand your business, hire some more employees, buy equipment, whatever it is. It's actually, no, it's coming from the small business owners themselves going to the banks and saying, hey, you know, I feel really good about my business. I'm ready to expand. I want to increase revenue. Uh, let's get a loan. So that's where you know, the low demand comes from. Naturally, it's coming from the business owners' feelings, their gut feeling about their business, or they're looking at the numbers and the rates saying, you know, I can now afford to take on this loan. Uh, so that is good news coming from the small businesses. We want to hear that they're optimistic. We've heard mixed reports about uh, consumers and how they're going to spend during Christmas time. But again, small business owners are still feeling good. I think there's uh, still some anticipation and uh, uncertainty coming with the election. So once the election's done, I think uh, a lot of people's guards will be down and they'll feel better about uh, their business coming in 2025. So we'll see. So now let's head over to Virginia, where Governor Youngkin has announced help for small businesses affected by Hurricane Helene. The Virginia Small Business Finance Authority is offering disaster loans of up to $50,000 to farmers and small businesses in the areas hit hardest by the storm. So there's a total of $6 million available. These loans will help cover lost money, repair damages, and replace equipment that was damaged or broken during the floods and the storms of Hurricane Helene in Virginia. So and with that in mind, they, they also, just for Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton, they have started accepting applications for uh, the EIDLs. So they've started accepting applications for uh, those businesses that were affected by those hurricanes, which is good news, but I, I haven't heard anything about them approving the loans and sending the money to these businesses just yet. But it's good that these state, uh, these local state governments, city governments are stepping in and saying, hey, we'll, we'll give you the money that you need to, to keep operating. Continue on this community support. We need to address a crucial program that's come under scrutiny recently. The SBA's Community Navigator Pilot Program, this initiative was launched under the American Rescue Plan Act. So this is under the Biden-Harris administration, which aimed to help underserved business owners access vital resources. Uh, but there's been some recent investigations revealing some troubling numbers. While the SBA claims they have trained over 350,000 people, the program has reportedly spent over uh, $100 million. I've also seen $130 million mark. So it's definitely it's over $100 million to start fewer. You know, they only started... I believe the number was, uh, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but it was under 500 businesses started from 100 million. That math doesn't add up. 
raising questions about its effectiveness and oversight. We did hear from the tribal news. I saw an article there from the tribal news that covers the Native American tribes across the country. They labeled it as a success for their Native American communities. One corporation, the Oesta Corporation, Oesta, Oesta, I don't know how you say it, I'm sorry. They are the largest Native American CDFI. Uh, they deliver nearly 8,000 hours of counseling for more than 1,100 unique clients, which resulted in $10.6 million in approved funding. So to me, I think that's a success. Um, I don't know how much they were given, uh, but mostly the, the most these corporations were given was $5 million. Um, so for them to complete 8,000 hours, help 1,100 unique clients, you know, 10.6 million of first funding. I can, I could live with that. I think those numbers add up. So Democrats celebrate the training achievements while Republicans label it a costly failure. And not only a costly failure, but it was a huge payment from the taxpayers, over $100 million. So what does this mean for future programs aimed at helping small businesses? Just to, I want to digest that for a second. Because again, we are hearing stories of, you know, success where they helped many different clients, many different businesses get started. Um, but also at the same time, there was no, when the program was set, there was, there was no goal to hit. There was no like, Hey, let's, let's reach X number of businesses. Let's get X number of hours to clients all over the country or prospective business owners. There was no, Hey, let's, let's make sure that we start X number of businesses or approve this much in funding. There was no goal inside. There was no standard to hit. So when you don't have a goal inside, it's just like, hey, here's some money. Make sure you do good with it. So when they're giving out this money, the SBA, from what I understand, I don't think the SBA actually gave money out, you know, to companies itself directly through that program. Like with an SBA loan, you go, you get the loan through a partnering SBA bank or lender. So in this case, it's CDFIs, it's or even economic development authorities for cities, local governments, that sort of thing, states. And in this case, we talked about the tribal news. So, so tribal governments or uh, CDFIs that represent tribal clients, you know, they, the money is getting funded to those organizations. They are receiving anywhere from a million to $5 million and with no, not much oversight and not much of a, Hey, you know, just take this money, make sure you, you, you counsel some small business owners and, uh, see if they can get funding. I mean, that's, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. It's just like, Hey, here's a hundred million. It's a drop in the bucket. Who cares? It's, you know, with the federal government, our, our budgets, trillions of dollars a year for them to not have staff, for them to start less than 500 companies for a hundred million dollars was just a huge detriment to the American taxpayer. I mean, it's very disappointing that we don't have uh, better statistics from this. More disappointing that we didn't help more small businesses to me. And, uh, you know, Republicans and again are saying, hey, you know, we just wasted this money. On top of that, it's inflationary. You know, hundred million may be a drop in the bucket to them, but to taxpayers. So really, it's really about small businesses and in the local economies. That's what it was made for. It was made for uh, businesses that can't access typical SBA resources because they don't have a hub or like an SBA hub or a government that provides SBA resources. So uh, a lot of rural companies were, were getting the support or were supposed to. So it, it's just unfortunate that, you know, we, we, those smaller the smaller economies, the small towns across the U.S. weren't actually getting the support that they could have used or more businesses weren't starting in those smaller economies because the SBA didn't give good enough direction in the first place or even set a goal. So to me, that's what I'm upset about. You know, if the numbers come out and say, hey, we actually started a ton of businesses, we just weren't keeping track of everything, then that's great news. But it seems like to me, just the way this whole thing smells, doesn't smell right. You know, it seems like they just gave a bunch of money out in these organizations. You know, they probably tried to do the right thing, but at the end of the day, at least hopefully they hired a few more people or were able to give more loans out to, to small businesses. But to me, it seems like the program did not work out the way it was intended. So, all right, now let's check out some financing deals of the day. First, we have a company, Lati, that's L-A-T-I-I. They're starting, they have secured $5 million in seed round funding led by lead out capital with participation from era ventures act one at nine four ventures and radv Lattes, i think i'm saying that right is a managed marketplace and supply chain automation tool for construction materials focused on sourcing discounted materials from latin america southern europe and northern africa so for general contractors out there subcontractors that are buying materials from the U.S. and say it's getting too expensive, well, they can now use uh, this platform called Lati. 
to source uh, discounted materials for their building, helping their bottom line, and they're still retaining the same quality. I assume the same quality. So pretty cool, pretty cool platform there. All right, so next up, staying with the construction uh, sector, we have a company called Build, B-I-L-L-D. They say they're the leading provider of financial solutions for commercial subcontractors. Announced its latest investment round today, securing $17.5 million in strategic funding. They say the investment helps accelerate Build's mission, further solidifying the company's role as a great partner to subcontractors and empowering the organization to continue driving innovation in construction finance. The round was led by LL Funds and Mission OG with RJT Credit, Ulysses Management, and High Sage Ventures. But uh, what, what Bill does, they offer material financing and pay app advance in as little as 24 hours. So uh, you need to finance some of the materials that you're buying. If you're in a pinch, you can, you can always uh, use a company like Build to finance those materials as well as pay app advance. There wasn't a lot of details on this, but I assume it's when, say, you know, you're waiting on a customer to pay you, but you have to pay for the next materials or you have to cover payroll. You can take out a line of credit with Build and uh, it gives you the financing that you need to to start either start the new project, the next project while you're waiting on a customer to pay you. We need to cover payroll this week, that sort of thing. And, and just looking at these two companies, it would make a lot of sense if they did some some sort of partnership build in Latsy. Is if maybe a subcontractor is sourcing some material through that platform Latsy, and uh, they can use a, either a line of credit or finance the material if they're using. Then they can use Build. So I think those two companies should partner up. So. If you all end up doing that, you got to cut me a check or something. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, that's, a, that's it for today's news. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. We do this every day for uh, more updates and information about small businesses when it comes to financing. We'll be back tomorrow with some more stories. You all have a great day. Thanks.